didn't see you there. You kind of caught me while I was indisposed. Hello everyone, Britton here, also known as Smoky Dude, and today is a bit of a special video, if you will. I, uh, uh, I've been noticing a, a bit of a trend on BookTube where BookTubers ask other BookTubers to come on their channels and talk about certain things that they like, dislike, mostly like, you know, we, we try to keep it positive on the BookTube. But I decided to get in on the action because I do have some editing skills, and, um, well, I did ask a good chunk of people to come and talk to me about their favorite books that they've read this year. Now, I will be making my own actual video talking about all the books I really enjoyed this year, so I'll try and keep uh, my pick to a minimum, but to get it out of the way, I will talk about my favorite book of the year real quick, uh, and that is The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. I just absolutely adored this book. I did a review of it already, so I won't go too much into why I enjoyed it, but man, The Lies of Locke Lamora was fantastic. I really enjoyed the prose. Uh, I love the world of Camor. I love the characters of Jean and Locke, and um, the story was just great, and there was just some really great, satisfying moments, including one involving a vicious prick of a magician. Uh, of, of the Bonds Magi, as they're called, uh, named the Falconer. So, yeah, that was really great fun. Uh, before I get into this, I wanted to thank all of the booktubers who came on and gave their clips of all the books that they enjoyed during 2023. I, I, I thank you all very deeply, and I hope we do this again at some point. So, uh, well, I won't waste your time any further. Let's get into this. Hey, Bryn. Great question. What is the best book of 2023. Now there are some books coming up that I'll be reading here soon. Who knows if they may outseed this, but I would like to use this opportunity to maybe put out a book that I don't believe anybody else is going to pick. Now this book not only was an amazing book from one of my favorite authors, but it just might be the best cover of the year. And that is The Dead Take the A-Train. Look at that beautiful cover, Richard Cadry and Cassandra Call. What an amazingly fun, shoot 'em up, demon slaying book. Everybody should go pick it up. It was one of my favorite, if not, my favorite read of 2023. Back to you, Bryn. Hey, this is T from Narrative Adventure. Britain asked me if I would come on and briefly talk about uh, my favorite book that I read in 2023. There's three that are that stand out to me as possibly my favorite books of the year. Unfortunately, uh, they're all completely different genres, so I can't really compare them. I believe the first one of the three that I read is Le Miserable by Victor Hugo. And this is one that it's a classic for a reason. It, everybody knows this book. It's huge, it's chunky. This is about the only book that I've ever read that I would actually uh, recommend an abridged version of. Next on the list though is The Legend of Blackjack by A.R. Witham. This one is a fantasy. It's a portal fantasy. Uh, probably one of the funnest books that I've read in a very long time. And while maybe not the just standout greatest story I've ever read or anything like that, it's one of just the funnest books that I've ever read and I, a great story to go along with that. And then moving, trying to actually get through these here, uh, the last one that I have is The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. This is the nonfiction book and this is one of the best books I have ever read. Just across the board, this, there was so much information. This book is about the, 19, the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. There's so much information in this book as well as an actual narrative through line through the entire book and it was just probably one of the best books I've ever read and definitely definitely one of the best books of 2023. Thanks for having me on Britain. Hey Jared from the Fantasy Thinker here. Our friend Britain from Samoki Dude asked me to give what my best book that I read this year in 2023 is. Uh, so um, I'm not counting rereads. These are all books that I read for the first time this year. And he's making me choose from this awesome stack of books. And uh, what a tough choice. These, these books are all incredible. Um, 
I am a ending guy, so I prefer endings. I prefer good endings. Um, so I'm going to go with The Killing God by Stephen R. Donaldson, book three in the trilogy of The Great God's War. This had a spectacular ending. It's quite a big book, but I did not notice it because I just couldn't stop turning the pages. Uh, he really stuck the landing, and it was very well put together, very well done. So that's it. This is my choice for my favorite book of the year. Thank you, Britt. So I'm Liam from Liam's Lyceum, and my favorite read of the year is a book that I believe is at least a decade old at this point. It's about that old, at least. Uh, and that is Central Station by Labby Tidar. Um, now, I think I first read Tidar this year, early this year, and I've read a handful of his books now. But this is just such a surprising read. It's sci-fi, if you couldn't tell by the name and the cover. Um, but it, it's also a fix-up novel, which... For those unaware, fix of novel is essentially stuff that has been previously published generally in smaller forms, so like short stories and such, and you put it together, you fix it up, right, and you make it a novel. So uh, these were originally published as short stories as far as I'm aware, um, but it's a cyberpunk sci-fi novel uh, set um, around this old space station um, in Israel, essentially, is the idea. Um, and it's got like magical realism elements, it's got vampires, like data vampires, um, and it's just a very interesting exploration of humanity, and I think Tidar is just such a great uh, writer, maybe a little underappreciated in some circles, but something you should definitely check out, and I think Central Station is worth uh, your time for sure, and it's not very long either. Hello everyone, this is most assuredly not Britain or some Okie dude. This is John from Talking Story, and I'm here on Britain's channel to tell you what my favorite read of 2023 was. A big part of my reading year, year this year was catching up on the Red Rising saga, so I would be primed and ready when book six, Lightbringer by Pierce Brown, came out. And I was, and it was everything I was hoping it to be. It was the perfect amalgamation of huge action set pieces combined with intimate character moments from characters coming together again that we've been waiting for this to happen through the whole series as well as an amazing spiritual journey for our main protagonist, Darrow, as he comes to terms with and grips with all of his decisions from the past. It was like he's Macbeth in Act 5 looking back, as opposed to this brash revolutionary where he started in the beginning of this six-book journey so far. Uh, it was just phenomenal. I loved every bit of it. I thought it was my favorite book of 2023. This has been Talking Story. My name is John Minton. Thank you so much, Britton, for inviting me. Hey, Britton. Thanks for having me on to answer this question. What was my favorite book of 2023? Well, that honor will have to go to Boy's Life by Robert McCammon. No, it is not a new book. It is a very old book. And I've been meaning to read it for, I think, going on 20 years now. But it's a coming-of-age story. It's about a man looking back at his life as a child. Uh, when he was a child, it takes place in the 60s. And it's, it's structured in a very interesting way. It's structured by seasons. So every uh, part of the book, there are four parts, and each part of those is a season. And of course, thematically, the events that are going on in the story relate to the season. But there's also something cool about the POV because it's written in first person, but he explains at the beginning how it works. There are some interesting POV shifts he does. There's also a lot of magical realism, uh, some events that are going on that you're never quite sure if it really happened or if it's just the imagination of a young boy. Anyway, highly recommend it. Love the book. Dare I say it's a perfect book. I guess you'll have to wait for my review to find out. So thanks again, man. Hello, Britain and Britain's viewers. Welcome to my classroom. Um, yeah, didn't have much time to film, so I'm filming in from my desk. Um, Britain asked me to be on here to tell you about my favorite book I read in 2023. So my favorite book I read in 2023, kind of hard to choose, but I think it's going to go to Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan, a new to me author. She's an Irish author, and this is about a man in 1980 who delivers coal to nunneries, Catholic nunneries. And he is forced during the snow, <laughs> um, a snowstorm in Ireland, to confront his past about who his father might be and how the Catholic Church treats unwed mothers. If you've ever read The Dead by James Joyce, I'm pretty sure this is a tribute to him. 
And if it's not, I think I'm going to eat my computer, because James Joyce is alive and well in Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. See you guys. I've been so lucky this 2023. Why? Because I read so many good books. I could talk on any of these books that I've read, but right now, the one that comes to mind is The Eleven Cycle. Oh my God, The Eleven Cycle was such a read. And I have to warn you because the first couple chapters are so boring so 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 boring and i couldn't stand it but i usually have a habit of finishing what i started even if i hated it and for the first time in a while it actually paid off that i kept reading because when the plot picks up like there's an event that marks the beginning of the plot picking up and once that event happens this book was so enjoyable to read but then the first aspect, the first part of it where things are still being set up, it felt very, very basic and very, very uninteresting, very, very unoriginal, very, very predictable. But then something happens along the book that just makes me go crazy. Like from that point in the book, I wasn't able to, to, to drop it until I finish reading it and it ends with such a banger. Eleven Cycle is a book that I feel like anyone who loves grimdark fantasy needs to read. Just muscle through the first part of the book, just keep reading. I know this is kind of like a weird recommendation but trust me, keep reading. Once it picks up, if you are a lover of grimdark fantasy or dark fantasy, you are going to love it. It has been epic approved so check it out. Honored to be a part of this and uh, yeah, stay epic. Hey everybody, this is Colin from Colin's Corner. Uh, before we get into this, I just want to take a second to thank Britton for inviting me to take part in this really fun collaboration video. I love watching these videos and to be taking part in one is awesome. And Britton asked me to just briefly in about a minute talk about my favorite read of 2023. Now, my favorite read of 2023 also coincides with becoming my current favorite book of all time, and that is... Fool's Fate, the third book in the Tawny Man trilogy by Robin Hobb. And the reason that this book is now currently my favorite book of all time is I have never had a cast of characters in a world connect with me more. And the more I get into the realm of the Elderlings, the less I feel like I need to scream from the mountaintops for everybody to read it. Sure, I want people to read it, but what I've come to learn about Realm of the Elderlings and some other series that I'm reading is... This series has become so important to me personally, uh, and that might not resonate with everybody. But what I do know is that I've never felt so connected to a cast of characters, and I never felt that a book ended so perfectly as the journey in Fool's Fate came to an end here. So my favorite read of 2023 and my current favorite book of all time is Fool's Fate. Hey guys, if you didn't know, my name is Dan. My channel's name is The Black and Blue Collar Reader. Britton asked me to come on this channel and tell you about the best book I read in 2023. And I gotta say, that's a hard choice, man. It's like asking me to choose between my dogs and kids. I don't know what is my favorite book, but I've got it narrowed down to four. I'm gonna pick a winner right now because I read Dead House Gates by Steven Erickson. I also read the White Luck Warrior by R. Scott Baker, and The Spear Cuts Through Water by Simon Jimenez. All three of these books are in my top five, but the one that takes the crown is gonna be Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. Go check this one out, guys. You won't be disappointed. Thanks for having me on, Britain. Peace. The best book that I read in 2023 was The Passenger, the glorious and criminally underappreciated swan song of the late, great Cormac McCarthy. This is a novel of immense ambition, if occasionally awkward, construction, a work which is both profound and profoundly moving. It wrestles with themes such as grief, longing, conspiracy, mathematics, and science, existential questions, and perhaps the very limits of human knowledge. It is a work which 
I wholeheartedly can recommend and think is really just a masterpiece and also which I sincerely hope will eventually get its deserved day in the sun. So, The Passenger by Cormac McCarthy, the finest book that I read in 2023. Give it a look if you haven't because I would say it is well worth the read. Hello friends, I am JCM Byrne, author of The Hybrid Helix, and Britton asked me to describe or talk about my favorite book of the year, and I actually have it. I did not read this edition, I read it on my Kindle, but Carl sent me his book, and I have it right here. The book is called Renia, and it is about a scribe um, given a mission uh, or an assignment to uh, transcribe a forbidden book. And, you know, already you've got to be loving this. Um, it's a very, uh, it's a wonderful book, beautifully written, um, super interesting. There's some mystery elements. Oh, look at this, all wrapped in, I never even saw that. I have had this for months. I have not opened it. Um, fantastic book, fantastic story, ancient magic, assassin. And this thing has, oh, look, look, look at the beautiful edges. Mmm, sprayed edges. Rania by Carl Forshaw. Okay, fantastic book. My favorite book, I think, of the year. Uh, I'm going to put this as my favorite book of the year uh, that I didn't write. Um, so pick this one up. It's available on Amazon. Um, oh, so nice. And there's Carl. Hi, Carl. Great book. Um, I would highly recommend reading it. There are assassins. There's ancient magic. There's a tragic past. Scribes. Got a love story about scribes, and uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. Uh, so uh, go buy it and read it. That's it. I'm Jason Amber, signing off. Thank you. I'm Ben from Books with Bengus Khan, and my favorite read of 2023 is Tiamat's Wrath. That's by Ty Frank and Daniel Abraham. It's the eighth and penultimate book in their amazing Expanse sci-fi series. So I've read so many spectacular books over the course of the year, and I read this one really early on in January, but it is still my top read, and it's one of the top reads of my life because it was gripping on a moment-to-moment basis. Every page was keeping me in suspense, just maximum engagement, and then it was emotionally involving as well. I had spent so many thousands of pages and so many hours with this group of protagonists that I cared so much about them and by now uh, they're in a very sticky situation. I just don't know how they're going to get out of their various troubles and this book has high stakes, impactful moment after impactful moment, an unpredictable plot but it wrapped up in a very satisfying way and it even introduced a new teenage character POV who is just one of the most complex, interesting teenagers I've ever read about. So it had new surprises around every corner and just a completely and utterly engrossing read from start to finish. It was perfection. I had no complaints about this one. What a fantastic roller coaster ride of a book. Say you're really good at something. You got a special power or knowledge or, you know, skills that no one else has, or you got a passion, and you got a boyfriend, he's really into you. And then, you die, because he needs to have a hero's journey. What are you going to do then? Well, you hang out in the afterlife, waiting for more of your sisters, because you know there's going to be more of them, and you tell each other stories. And that's called The Refrigerator Monologues by Catherine Valente, which was the best book I read this year. <laughs> it is really good. You should go and read it as well. And uh, yeah, thanks, Britain, for asking me. Um, that's my answer. And uh, I got to do this the way I always do it. Cheers. Hello, we're Carlos and Yolanda from StoryTube, and thanks a lot to Britain for inviting us onto this little video. We're going to talk about our two favorite books of this year that we're not really sure if, well, I'm not really sure if it's my favorite book of the year, but I'm just going to pick one. Uh, mine is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, and uh, it's really good. It kind of speaks to, I guess, my values as a person. And there's a lot of things in here that just take my personal boxes, um, like a love for comic books and uh, theater 
So it's a really cool book. It's post-apocalyptic. And I had a really great time. What about you? Hey, everyone. Um, so, yeah, like you said, this is Gut Instinct um, right now. Probably favorite book of the year. And for me, that is no doubt Lightbringer by Pierce Brown, which is the sixth book in the Red Rising series. And is absolutely everything that I want from a Red Rising book. It is absolutely everything that I want from any book and any story, to be honest. It has depth and theme. It has amazing characters. It has movie-esque, um, cinematic is the word I'm looking for. It has cinematic sequences and it's just straight up amazing storytelling and one of the best books I've ever read. Cool. Thanks for get, having us on again, Britain, and Merry Christmas to everybody. Thanks, Britain. Merry Christmas. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, it's Britain uh, again. Uh, and I wanted to say thank you to everyone who was involved in talking about their favorite reads from this year. Um, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Go check all of those channels out. They're all great people um, who dealt with my craziness for the past year. And, uh, man, it's been a... It's been a great year for reading for me, man. It might um might be the best year I've had uh, reading wise in a very long time. So I'm very great. I'm very grateful for that, and thank you all for watching this year. Um, I will be making my own video discussing all of the books that I really enjoyed this year, all my favorite books from this year. But again, I just wanted to thank everyone for contributing, and um, you all are just fantastic people, and. Um, you can find me on Twitter, uh, some okie dude. You can also find me on Goodreads and Letterboxd, where I do reviews that are probably more coherent than the ones you just heard right now. And you can find me on Discord if you want to come talk to me. Um, yeah. Have a good Christmas, and have a good, uh, New Year's. See you guys later. Bye-bye.